Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel. Uh, it has become a little BBT enclave. We're working on the first audiobook of one of Prabhupada's major works, the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And we're just nearing the first proof hearing. Of course, there's going to have to be a last proof hearing by the grace of Bhakti Bland, who has come with us on this journey. And with, you cannot imagine what kind of knowledge this person has in sound engineering. And he's giving lessons to uh, Rasika, teaching me all kinds of things. And in return, we're trying to teach him all kinds of things. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, here we are. Uh, very special night in our reading. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram. Uh, Srila Sanakam Goswami's sweet uh, glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It goes like this. Sarva Shastab Dipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mind of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kalidvan Aditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who were supreme, supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Mareka bando matsangin madguro man mahadana man nistadaka mad bhagya mad ananda namostute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. The sadhu, sadhu ta dayin, atini chuchata kada, han munchakada chen mam, premna rit kanta yospura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, Gopakumar has finally reached Goloka Vrindavan and he's inquiring from uh, the residents there. Uh, we're beginning with text 44 of chapter 6 of the Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Sri Gopakumar said, as if anointed by a downpour of the purest nectar, I gazed with one-pointed attention 
down the path the old lady had pointed out. You remember? He met this old lady and she pointed. She said, look at the trees. All the leaves are pointed in that direction. Krishna's coming from that direction. Text 45. The sheer force of my ecstasy had frozen my thighs, but with some effort I moved on and I heard from afar a certain sound. Mixed with the mooing of cows, it was the supremely attractive murmur of Krishna's enchanting flute. That sound, sweet melodies of sportingly played notes, the verse with musical embellishments, was like nothing ever heard in the material world. Its attractive force at once overwhelmed everyone in the cowherd village. Commentary The first sounds Gopakumar heard from Krishna's flute were sweet but not very clear. Such an indistinct musical sound is called kala. Then Gopakumar began to discern the different notes of the scale and then and then coherent melodies like the Malara Rag. And then, as the sound came even closer, he could hear subtle embellishments known as murchana, chromatic modulations. Meditating on the sound absorbed Gokumar's attention and indeed that of everyone present. Text 47 by the power of that sound, sap flowed in a downpour from the long rows of trees. A flood of tears fell from the eyes of every embodied being in the village of the cowherds. A shower of milk rained from the breasts of all of Krishna's mothers, even the elderly. And the rapid currents of the Yamuna suddenly stood still commentary. As the living beings in the forest had all enjoyed the association of Krishna during the day, now in the evening everyone who lived in the village delighted in seeing him again. Not only Mother Yashoda, but many other mothers of Krishna, including his aunts and nurses, responded ecstatically to the sound that promised his return. All the mothers of the cowherd boys and calves had in fact become Krishna's mothers when Krishna had expanded himself to replace the boys and calves stolen by Brahma. Normally, nothing can stop the current of Sri Yamuna, but the sound of Krishna's flute is no ordinary force. <coughs> Text 48 I didn't know whether that flute gave out poison or the nectar of immortality, whether its sound was harsh like thunder or soft like water, hotter than blazing fire or cooler than the moon, I couldn't tell. But that sound drove all the Brajabhasis mad. All of them were utterly <laughs> bewildered. Text 49 then I saw some women of Braja come out of their homes, bearing in their hands the things needed to greet Krishna with worship. Others who passed by held ornaments and offerings of food on their heads. Commentary Some of the ladies carried lamps, flowers, mustard seeds, and other articles for offering arati to Krishna. Other ladies carried pots of butter on their heads and carried garlands and fragrant sandalwood pulp and sweet and spicy yogurt, all meant for Krishna's enjoyment. Text 50 Other ladies, ignoring everything around them, ran toward the mingling sounds of the mooing of the cows and the song of the flute. In the frenzy of love for Krishna, the ladies stumbled down the path. Commentary 
When these gopis attempted to run forward, nothing could interfere but their own eagerness. This was evidence of how purely they loved Krishna. 51. Some ladies ran with their ornaments in disarray. Some could hardly keep their belts and hair tied. Some stayed in their homes, stunned like trees, and others fell unconscious to the ground. 52. Some of the women who had fainted, their faces wet with tears and saliva, were carried forward by their girlfriends. Other ladies, pained by the urges of their love for Krishna, went ahead, pressed on by their friends. Come, see him. Commentary The gopis had no need to specify to one another who the object of their attraction was. They simply referred to Krishna as tam me tam, him, this person. Without any explicit description, they all knew whom they were talking about, Krishna, the Lord of their life. Text 53. The ladies, so diverse in complexion and adorned with diverse ornaments and dress, put to shame the good fortune of the goddess of fortune herself. Swiftly, the ladies ran to the bank of the Yamuna, absorbed in singing his names and pastimes. Text 54. I too went forward as if pulled by someone, joining in the throng of gopis rushing forward on all sides. I too began to run quickly. Commentary The young gopis came out of their houses and rushed in groups to the path along the Yamuna, which, by which Krishna was expected to return. These gopis were more fortunate and more beautiful than even Mahalakshmi, the wife of Lord Narayana. Text 55 Then, from a distance, I saw him, his charming flute in hand. Running quickly, he emerged from among his friends and animals and approached me, saying in a sweet voice, Look, Sri Dhamma, here is my dear friend Sarup, the sun who shines on the lotus of your family. Commentary In texts 55 through 59, Gopu Kumar describes his first impression upon seeing Krishna in Goloka. Because Krishna recognized Gopu Kumar as his friend Sarupa, Krishna left behind the cowherd boys and the cows and ran forward to greet him. Text 56 Krishna was dressed for the forest. His garments, earrings, and peacock feather crown all swayed to and fro. And so did his garland of kadamba flowers. His fragrance perfumed all directions and his beautiful lotus face blossomed with a playful smile. Text 57 his lotus eyes beamed with a merciful glance and the varied assets of beauty decorated him in a singular way. The fingers of his lotus hand busily pushed back the locks of his hair which flew about, adorned with the dust raised by the cows. His tender, divine lotus feet touched the surface of the earth just to grant her the gift of supreme splendor. Playfully dancing as he moved, they attracted everyone's heart with their great eagerness to walk, to walk quickly with large steps. Text 59 The effulgence of his cloud-colored body, shining with the full sweetness of youth, lit up all corners of the sky. His beauty, which captured the hearts of the ever-dear devotees of Braja, was an ocean abounding with countless excellences. Commentary Unable to express much more about the beauty of Krishna's body, which glowed like a new rain cloud, Gopakumar sums up Krishna's beauty by describing it 
as an ocean of excellences. As an ocean is constant and unfathomably deep, so are all of Krishna's personal qualities. In Goloka, Krishna's beloved devotees know the value of his beauty and other virtues because the hearts of those devotees are completely attracted to him as his heart is to them. Text 60 He leaped forward and came close to me, compelled by the affection of his helpless devotee. I fainted in love at seeing him. He caught hold of me by the neck and suddenly he too fell to the ground. Commentary Gopakumar was already aware, at least theoretically, that Krishna is very affectionate to his helpless devotees. But now he learned that Krishna had affection specifically for him. Merely seeing Krishna was enough to utterly enchant Gopakumar. But this new discovery pushed him toward the limit of ecstasy. Text 61 A moment later I reawoke and carefully freed my neck from his grasp. I stood up and saw him on the ground in a faint, moistening the dust-covered path with his tears. Commentary Even though Krishna was unconscious, he was crying so profusely that his tears were turning the dust on the road into mud. Some gopis came and said, Look, who has come here? What has he done? He has put our life and soul into such a state? Alas, alas, just see people of Braja, now we are all dead. Commentary The gopis didn't know who Gopakumar was, other than some stranger dressed as a cowherd boy. 63. This must be some servant of that great wizard, Kangsa. Lamenting like this, in many ways the gopis cried loudly in distress as they surrounded Krishna. Then from behind Krishna, several groups of cowherds quickly approached. Seeing him in such a state, they cried with pitiful voices. 65 and 66. From far away in the village, Nanda and the other elder cowherds heard this terrible sound of crying. So too did Yashoda, ever affectionate to her son. And so, and so did the other elder ladies and, maid, and the maidservants. Together they all ran to that place, their feet stumbling on the path. Bewildered, they too cried, Alas! Alas! Then the cows and bulls and calves came there, and the black deer and other animals. Seeing Krishna in that state, they wept in agony. The animals, all crying in love, their faces drenched with floods of tears, approached Krishna one by one and gently smelled and licked him again and again. Commentary. The men, women, and animals all spontaneously reacted so desperately because Krishna was the exclusive center of their existence. Great numbers of birds flying overhead told also of their misery by making a tumultuous sound that sounded like people crying. Commentary. The birds roaming in the sky could not discern exactly what was going on below, but they responded sympathetically nonetheless. 70. And the immobile creatures in great pain within seemed suddenly to dry up. What more is there to say? All beings moving and not moving were on the verge of death. As for me, I was drowning in a vast ocean of sorrow. Confused about what to do, severely tormented, I put Krishna's feet on my head. 
and began profusely sobbing and lamenting. Commentary. When he put Krishna's feet on his head, he could see how beautiful, soft, and attractive they were. Text 72. Then Lord Balabhadra, Krishna's older brother, quickly arrived from some distance away, full of fear. White complexioned and arrayed in blue garments, he appeared charming, for he was the same age as Krishna and as nicely dressed. Commentary. Unable to keep up with Krishna, when Krishna had run to meet Gopakumar, Balaram had fallen behind with the other cowherd boys, but now he anxiously hurried forward, concerned for Krishna's safety. Gopakumar saw that Balarama was of the same Kaishora age as Nandanandana, but differed from him in being white like the fibers of a lotus stem and being dressed in blue. Text 73 Lord Balabhadra that most skillful of persons, cried for a moment, but then seemed to regain his composure and looked all around. With great care and attention, he made me hold his younger brother by the neck with my arms. Commentary. At first Balarama cried in distress to see Krishna in such a condition, but he quickly gathered his wits and looked around, all around, to find out what had made Krishna faint? Text 74. He wiped Krishna's beautiful limbs clean with my hand and made me loudly call out to him with many plaintive cries. Then he made me lift Krishna up from the ground. Text 75. Suddenly, Krishna opened his eyes, sealed till then by a flood of tears. Seeing me, he joyfully embraced and kissed me. But then he looked around and became embarrassed. Commentary. Krishna had become helplessly bewildered by love for his friend. And he was embarrassed by the thought that from his tearful reaction to Gopal Kumar's arrival, everyone could see this. 76. That best of lords took my hand in his own, his own left lotus hand, and received me as a long-lost bosom friend. He asked me various questions. Then he greeted all the people of Braja and entered the best of cowherd villages with the gait of an elephant. Commentary. Krishna's closest friends are as dear to him as life itself. Holding Gopakumar's hand, Krishna welcomed him with such, with such questions as, Dear friend, are you healthy and happy? Text 77 The forest animals were miserable because now they had to part from him. Unable to go anywhere without him, they simply stood at the entrance of the village ready to spend the entire night there in hope of seeing their Lord again the next morning. Text 78 The birds flew here and there high over the village to watch him, but when night came and they could no longer see him, they cried out as if weeping and flew away. Commentary All the creatures in Goloka, including the jungle beasts and the birds, are fixed in unalloyed devotion to Krishna. 79. At the insistence of Nanda Maharaj, who was anxious with love for his sons, just after, the milk, after milking the cows, the two brothers went to their home. They went home at once, not even giving the cows proper attention. Commentary. Nanda Maharaj anxiously told Krishna, my boy, you must be tired from so much wandering in the forest. Go home with your elder brother and take your bath. I will look after the cows. Please don't delay any longer or your mother, mother will be unhappy and scold me. Please cooperate and go right now. 
Text 80. Mother Yashoda quickly came to meet the boys, her clothing and body wet from the milk flowing from her breasts and the tears that flooded from her eyes in love. Together with Rohini, she worshipped each limb of both brothers again and again. Commentary. The mothers of the two boys worshipped them by offering arati to all parts of their bodies. Text 81. Yashoda performed arati to her son Krishna by caressing him with her own hair and affectionately embraced and kissed him. She couldn't decide whether she ought to keep him on her head, on her breast, or within her womb to protect him. 82. Krishna, anxious with love for me, brought me there outside his home and had him offer and had me offer respects to her. And Madhya Shoda, seeing the great love Krishna had for me, happily caressed me as though I were her own son. Commentary Inspired by Krishna's obvious love for Gopakumar, Yashoda also took Gopakumar on her lap and embraced him. She had seen how enthusiastically Krishna had greeted him when he and Krishna had first met on the road. 83. Then the gopis all arrived there at once. Some had made excuses for coming and others had paid no regard to what anyone thought. Commentary. The gopis were beyond concern for public opinion and ordinary religious principles. 84 and 85. Mother Yashoda and Mother Rohini got ready to bathe Krishna and his brother. But when Lord Krishna saw this, being eager to enjoy with the cowherd girls, he said, Dear mothers, we brothers are very hungry, so please make some rice, send for our father, and feed us right away. 86. Upon hearing those words, the gopi said affectionately, Sri Yashoda, Queen of Raja, and dear Rohini Devi, please set this work of bathing aside. Commentary. The gopis were happy to hear Krishna's request because it gave them an excuse for sending away Mother Yashoda, Rohini, and Balarama. Text 87. Please quickly prepare everything to feed these two boys. We shall gladly give them a proper bath without delay. 88. Sri Yashoda had said, Dear girls, first quickly bathe the older boy, then send him to fetch Nanda for the meal. Commentary. Unsuspecting, Yashoda addressed the gopis as Balika, innocent girls. Text 89. Sri Srupa said, Welcoming and praising Yashoda's words, several of the gopis quickly bathed Balarama and sent him off. Meanwhile, the two mothers went into the house. Commentary. Gopakumar has now assumed his original identity as Krishna's friend, Sarupa. From now on, he will be referred to by that name. In the presence of Krishna's elder brother, the gopis were shy. They were not able to relax and enjoy his company as they did Krishna's. Therefore, they were glad to see Balarama and the two mothers go as soon as possible. Text 90. The gopis divided up the service among themselves. They removed Krishna's various ornaments one by one and wiped his limbs with their own garments. Commentary. There were many gopis who wanted to serve Krishna, too many for all of them to do the same thing at once. So they divided the tasks. One gopi took off one of Krishna's ornaments, a different gopi another, and so on. They did the preliminary wiping either with cloths they had brought from their homes or with their own shawls. Text 91 But when they asked for his flute, who was their rival consort, and tried to snatch it from his lotus hand, Krishna made a sign to alert me and threw it from a distance into my open palm. 
commentary. The gopis were removing Krishna's ornaments one after another, but he didn't want the girl to, girls to take his flute. The girls, seeing the flute as a competitor for the nectar of his lips, had some ill feelings toward it and might dispose of it. As it was, several of the girls were greedily demanding, give it to me, no, give it to me. And they were threatening to rip it away by force. Therefore, Krishna raised his eyebrows to signal Sarupa, who was standing some distance behind him, and swiftly threw it into Sarupa's outstretched hand. Text 92 the gopis smeared fine oils on Krishna and slowly removed the excess with their soft lotus hands, expert in touch. Text 93 Yet Krishna, either because his body was so tender or simply out of playful naughtiness, suddenly drew in his breath, making a sound of pain and distorted his beautiful face. Text 94 His mother as her life dedicated only to his welfare, heard that sound and quickly came outside and asked, What has happened? What has happened? Text 95 But when she saw her son's smiling face, she went back into the house, and the gopis, laughing yet afraid, started to sing as they finished Krishna's massage. Commentary the gopis were amused by Krishna's false show of pain and frightened by Mother Yashoda's rebuke. They started singing not only because he was very fond of songs, but also because they wanted to prevent Mother Yashoda from hearing any further outcries. 96. Next, they playfully bathed him with warm, clear, fragrant water carried from the Yamuna in jewel-studded vessels and small clay pots. Commentary. <clears throat> Careful to make Krishna's bath water just slightly warm, not hot, the gopis used the freshest, most fragrant water they could find, namely water from the river Yamuna. Text 97. They dressed him like an actor and decorated him the way he liked, with clothes, jewelry, wonderful garlands, and perfumed pastes all brought from their homes. Commentary Yata Ruchi can be understood to mean either according to his taste or according to their taste. In any event, his taste and theirs were the same. Text 98 They stealthily fed him something, worshipped him again and again with prescribed items and then placed those items on their heads. Commentary The gopis stealth, stealthily fed Krishna butter and other nice food. They wanted to keep these dealings confidential and they specifically wanted to keep Ishoda from finding out and becoming angry that Krishna was being fed between meals and might therefore get indigestion. After feeding him, the gopis worshipped him with standard paraphernalia such as camphor, lamps, and mustard seeds. Text 99 They decorated his throat, his forehead, his cheeks, and so on with wonderful designs made with first-class pastes of sandal, saffron, and musk. Text 100 While he lovingly gazed at the gopis, they tried hard to keep their hands steady as, the, as, the, as with pleasure, they set about dubbing colorium on his lotus eyes to make them shine. Colerium. Commentary. Because Krishna's loving glance made the gopis ecstatic, their hands began to tremble, and they had difficulty applying Krishna's kajal neatly. Then from a distance, oh, what happened? Whoops. <laughs> I forgot to click on the place, so I went right back to the place where we started. <laughs> oh, Krishna, Chaitanya. 
Krishna, this is a dramatic pause so that we can digest what we just heard. Yeah. It went way back up. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay. Hare Krishna. <laughs> they stealthily fed him something, worshipped him again and again with prescribed items, and then placed those items on their heads. While he lovingly gazed at the gopis, they tried hard to keep their hands steady as with pleasure they set about daubing coolerium on his lotus eyes to make them shine. This is where we were. Yeah. Krishna spoke freely with them about how he enjoyed sporting in the forest and by joking with them in various charming ways he inspired their special conjugal love. Commentary in this situation, Krishna took the liberty to touch some of the gopis on their breasts. Text 102 In the midst of all these loving exchanges, the decoration never quite got finished. The gopis had, the gopis had to keep erasing their attempts and trying again and again. Commentary These distractions made it difficult for the gopis to finish the final touches of putting tilak on Krishna's forehead painting his face, hands, and so on. Several times they decided, this hasn't been done right, erase it and do it again. <laughs> 103. Madhya Shoda, her heart perturbed by affection for her son, came outside several times to see what was going on and spoke to the girls as if angry. Commentary. Madhya Shoda was only apparently angry. Right. Rusha, Eva, she could never actually harbor any ill feelings towards the young gopis. Text 104. Sri Yashoda said, O oh, daughters of the cowherds, you are just unreliable children. Haven't you finished bathing and decorating them yet? Commentary. Having known these girls from the beginning of their lives, Yashoda was very familiar with their behavior. They couldn't carry out such a simple task in a reasonable time and this proved her judgment of them. Text 105 Sri Sarupa said, As the gopis stood around their beloved Krishna, glancing at him again and again, one older lady noticed that Krishna seemed eager for some joking words. She therefore spoke up. My goodness, come here, my daughter Yashoda. You will be happy to see this. These girls have made your dark blue son very handsome. 107. Hearing these joking words from the elderly lady, her, her nurse, Mukura, Yashoda again came outside. And when she understood the joke, she spoke out as if angry. Sri Yashoda declared, All kinds of natural beauty worship the lotus feet of my Shamasundar, who dances with abandon on the head of the universe. Commentary There may be many beautiful boys in the world, but in the eyes of Mother Yashoda, her son excels them all. After all, he is not only Sundara, but also Shama. In other words, his dark complexion makes his beauty unique. 109. For sure, the beauty of all these gopis combined deserves not even a show of respect from the beauty of even the tip of one of his toenails. Commentary. 
someone might argue with Yashoda that although no one's beauty approaches Krishna's, Sri Radha and her gopi companions are exceptions. After all, they are the most beautiful thing, beings in creation. But Yashoda says, no, not even their beauty dares stand in comparison with his. Whatever little beauty they may have is of no use since they are not meant to become his wives. Text 110 Sri Sarupa said, It is possible to describe his beauty. Sri Sarupa said, Is it possible to describe his beauty, the splendor of his effulgent complexion, or his charming sweetness? With that sweetness, no things in this world can compare, nor can even the sweetness of God Himself in other forms, not even as the Lord of Dwarka. Commentary In His unique bodily luster, in the sublime proportion and symmetry of all His limbs, and in the overall splendor and charm of His form, Krishna's beauty is amazing. Attempts to compare his eyes and other features to beautiful things, such as lotuses, do little justice to his beauty. In fact, it is useless to compare Krishna's beauty even to that of Sri Vishnu and other forms of Godhead who imitate the ways of the material world, or even to that of Sri Narayana or the Lord of Ayodhya or Sri Yarunath, Krishna of Dwarka. Text 111 As Krishna of all romantic heroes is the most superb, so Radha of all romantic heroines. And as Radha of all hero, heroines is the most superb, so Krishna of all, of all heroes. Commentary The only beauty that can truly compare with Krishna's is the equal beauty of Srimati Radharani. The two lovers are comparable only with one another. Text 112 When the gopis saw that Nanda, king of the cowherds, had taken his bath and had arrived with Balaram, they all speedily disappeared and Krishna came forward. Commentary As Nanda Maharaj approached, the gopis recognized his voice. Without waiting for him to, to see him, without waiting for him to see them, they hid themselves nearby. And we'll stop tonight's reading. It's 8 o'clock. Hare Krishna. Sri Krishna ki jai. Nanda Maharaj ki jai. Sri Srimati Radharani and the other gopis ki jai. Sri Sarupa. The newest person in the spiritual world, Kijai. Mm -hmm. Notice how right away he got to see all these things. Hare Krishna. Okay. There's no literatures that can compare to those of the Goswamis and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami that elaborate on the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's what this is. Okay, Hare Krishna. What you got over there? It's, wait, we got, he's, got the, he's got the mic. He's about to speak. <laughs> His eyebrows are white wick. Moving up and down. <laughs> Go ahead. So, first comment from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Gopakanya Devi Dasi. She's off first off the blocks every morning, every yeah. evening. Jai Maharaj Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Sri Brihad Bhagavatam. Jai Sri Jai Sri La Prabhupada. Jai Sri La Prabhupada. Hare Bo. Su Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Dya Maharaj Hare Bo. Arundran Vrama Haribo. 
What else can you say after that? What else can you say? <laughs> Maybe I'll just I'll, j I'll jump to the comments. Okay, from Braj Valaba. Hari Bol Braj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of glories to Srila Prabhupada. It appears the residents of Goloka are very innocent. Is this a trait of liberated souls or just unique to Goloka? It's it both. It's a trait with all liberated souls, but it finds its perfection in Goloka. Their innocence is unique because their love for Krishna is, as we've just heard, uh, all-encompassing, all-absorbing. And still notice that everything's going on. It's eating, bathing, this, that, the other thing going on, but it's all about Krishna. So they're also the most sophisticated as well as the most innocent. Notice the go they're clever, you know. They they noticed Jhoda's gonna get in in the way. So we're gonna sing some songs so she can't hear if Krishna does another noise and it's gonna come out again. This is cleverness. They're clever. They're the most clever. This is life. This is real life. The, the things that go on in our family lives, in our adventurous lives, and whatever we do, in the, it's just a little, it's a shadow of what's going on in the spiritual world. Therefore, we always say, get to know Krishna, get to know Him. And if you get to know Him, you mm -hmm. cannot help but love Him. And when your love becomes focused completely on Him, then all the other relationships become complete. Go ahead. Go ahead. From Bhakta Ben. Hey Bhakta Ben, Hare Krishna. Thank you for your kindness, Maharaj. I feel very humbled to hear from you. No, I'm just I'm just opening my mouth and reading. <laughs> I'm not so expert. I'm not like my god brothers who know so many things. I just know this. Hare Krishna. It's from Praj Vallabha. Ah. I love that Krishna has a system with his friends to protect the flute. Yes. Love out loud. Yes. He's got a sense of humor. He's really clever. The supremely everything. That's the point. Krishna is the supreme everything. Rati Manjai said, Jai Guru Maharaj. Jai Rati. Hope you had a nice meeting with Trey Das. Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Guru Dev, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for a rare chance to hear about such a nectar. Hare Bo. Rati Manjari. We just had an enlivening book distribution meeting with Trey Das Prabhu and Jai Gopa Prabhu. Diving into your association is very sweet indeed. Hare Krishna. Well, that's, you know, Prabhupada told us that, you know, the, the activity of going out and trying to convince the conditioned souls to meet Krishna and come and be with Krishna and do devotional service, it's actually the same. You know, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Krishna in the mood of Radharani, the rarest form, rarest. And so his Sankirtan movement is being conducted by him. But Prabhupada is his emissary. He's spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world like no one has before. There's a very strong argument to be made this service is not different than the service of the gopis to bring others to Krishna. That's Prabhupada's conclusion. Sankirtan Mubh. Therefore, when he, in his first uh, 
volume of Bhagavad uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, there was a f- f- painting, and the painting had was divided in two halves, and the top half was the Rasa Leela crowd in Krishna Govi, and the bottom half was the Sankirtan party of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Hare Krishna. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate so much that you're here and. Hare Krishna, this is such a wonderful part of the Brihat Bhagavatamrita. And now we're going to go deeper and deeper into Krishna's pastimes and get to know Him better and get to know His devotees better. And the more we do that, the more we become satisfied. Sri Brihat Bhagavatamrita ki jai, samavira bhakta binda ki jai, kaur prema nandi, hari hari bol, see you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. The creme de la 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 creme. Haribo, see you tomorrow.